Um, so, I was a bit puzzled after the morning discussion, should we be pessimistic or optimistic about diversification, new economic opportunities in those remote peripheral areas? Uh, well, from our experience on regional development, on innovation uh, in, in, in developed countries, I think even in the more difficult territories, in, in lagging regions, lagging parts of uh, our economics, I tend to think that there are no territories without future, but there are territories without projects. And I, I think we are talking here about the projects for NORA and its constituent parts. So I would like to take the optimistic view. And maybe what I would like to do is to recall quite briefly the key points that we put into this report about the possibilities, the opportunities for economic diversification and uh, innovation within NORA. To start with, the first, I would say the starting point of our analysis is that innovation is key for competitiveness and for growth, even in those kinds of territories which have a lot of uh, barriers for development. We have talked about peripheral peripherality and others. But for those, your countries and regions with high salaries, with the Nordic uh, welfare mod model which is to, to which you are attached, there is no way out than innovating and having high value uh, added economic activity. So innovation is key. Two roads can possibly be followed and I think they are both complementary. One is intensifying and being more efficient in production in traditional activities, mainly resource-based activities, on the one hand, and on the, on the other hand is diversifying into new activities with more value-added, more knowledge-based activities. A point in the report is that those two roads are complementary, but that perhaps uh, more accent could be uh, placed on the second road, creating new, more value-added, more knowledge-based activities. Um, and this is probably more difficult, less obvious, but uh, we recommend to place an accent in, in the NORA countries and in the NORA cooperation on this second road. To start with the first road, innovation in resource-based activities, well, this is obviously important because this is still very much at the heart of the competitiveness, employment, and, and growth, and the ma main economic activities in the NORA territories. So it is important to become more efficient, to upgrade uh, production uh, and, and processes, but of course there are risks. Risks because of uh, risk of being dependent of uh, natural resources, risks because there is a price volatility in those natural resources, because there is a, a risk uh, or uh, changes in demand which might divert the markets to other natural resources. Of course, NORA is price taker in this game. Uh, it's not fixing prices, so uh, NORA is very vulner vulnerable to those market changes and price changes. There is also a risk of resources depletion, mostly in the fishing industries, and, but also in, in other uh, mineral and, and, and oil uh, industries. We have heard about this this morning. And there are environmental hazards in those industries. So uh, my colleague Carl Christian talked about uh, improving efficiency, safety, sustainability in the fishing industry, so I will not come back to this. There is also room for more efficiency in energy, exploitation, hydroelectric um, energy, geothermal energy, uh, conducting joint research in those areas. And of course, in the perspective of developing uh, mining activities, there are also opportunities for uh, integrating latest technological development. So there are many ways to uh, promote and uh, diffuse innovation in those traditional resource-based sectors. The second road, which is uh, about being more innovative in less traditional sectors, new sectors, of course presents the uh, advantages to reduce this dependence from raw materials and, and uh, from the risks related to those uh, resource-based activities. 
It also has the potential to reduce the odd migration, so the problems that have been uh, discussed already in the previous sessions and, and before, to offer uh, new job opportunities and also women-friendly uh, job opportunities in, in, in other sectors, opportunities for skilled people who are living uh, at least part of the NORA territories. So uh, this, of course, presents a lot of opportunities or there are a, a lot of good reasons to follow this road. But of course, it faces a number of problems, which we already labeled low critical mass peripheral peripherality, also the lack, the, the, the sheer lack of uh, the quantitative uh, lack of manpower, but also the qualitative mismatch between those new activities and the existing labor forces in uh, the countries. In the report, we discuss relatively briefly a number of areas which I think have more or less been cited by the previous uh, panelists, notably from the Faroe Islands. Value added new products, new products from the fishing industries in uh, the, the, the blue biotech, pharma uh, industry, biomedicine is one area. Another one is also linked to the, 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 the fishing and food sector uh, um, within the development of Arctic foods under joint branding activities, uh, transform products, again coming back to this point that we made under the, the, the fisheries uh, analysis that there is a need also to evolve beyond the raw product sales but uh, enter into transformation of um, fish and other Arctic foods. Tourism, but in this case again targeting the uh, high-end high -end, segment uh, of the market, high quality, uh, ecologically friendly tourism segment which is low in numbers but uh, with um, touching a, a population or clientele that is ready to pay high price. We also uh, recommend to foster uh, development in ICT-based applications which are specifically suited for uh, remote and peripheral territories. And last but not least, with something that was also, I think, briefly mentioned, is the potential for creative industries which do not necessarily rely on high number and critical masses but can be developed by small even isolated entrepreneurs and uh, deliver small scale services uh, and products. Well in all those new activities the key words are really low number, high value, highly differentiated uh, product which require or offer potential for joint branding between the various parts of uh, NORA targeting uh, niche markets and relying on uh, very good entrepreneurship dynamics. We are talking about relatively new activities and of course according to the territories this can be completely brand new. In other uh, parts of NORA like Iceland for example there, there are already a number of knowledge based activities which are going on but which are still accounting for uh, relatively small number of jobs and, and, and value added. So two roads, uh, having more efficient, more value added activities in the traditional sectors and developing new markets. A third complementary uh, potential that we see for the NORA territories uh, is, relies in the capacity to become nodes relatively small nodes but interesting nodes in R&D networks. We can't expect having top excellent central with critical mass in uh, very important uh, activities, research activities. But parts of the territory and joining forces across NORA can provide this, uh, this territory an opportunity to offer a good base for mostly for experimental and applied R&D activities connected to broader networks. And in this case, as we said, uh, I think in the previous section, we are certainly not recommending 
that NORA takes an inward looking focus, uh, trying to build uh, R&D knowledge no nodes, relying only on the NORA forces. So we certainly recommend that NORA becomes integrated in much wider networks and opens up um, linkages towards the, the big hubs in, in science and technology. So we mentioned climate change research where Obviously, the territory has a very good, very good assets for experimental and applied research, marine research and fishing, uh, building technologies, which is specifically tuned to Arctic uh, harsh conditions, small scale renewable, renewable energy uh, research. So there are a number of areas where, by definition, those territories have a potential for specialization, mostly uh, under ex the experimental and applied end of research. Those potentials, potentialities for cooperation for new and more diversified activities, of course, as I said before, uh, met with difficulties, but uh, also require a number of preconditions. When we thought about this, this, we found that most of the preconditions had to do with human capital. So I can not agree more with the previous speakers who put this question of human resources and education at the core of the precondition for the development of all parts of the territory, but also for the cooperation. So more diversified skill base is necessary, the capacity not only to retain uh, the skilled people or to have students f originally from the countries coming back, but also attracting uh, skills and talent from, uh, from outside. So this idea of brain circulation rather than brain drain, uh, brain, brain drain is very much at the heart of our recommendation. So that covers certainly primary, secondary education, uh, specifically in, in Greenland, but also tertiary education. Lifelong learning, adult uh, education, vocational training, and distance learning opportunities, which are uh, a bit more obvious as cooperation areas throughout NORA. Another range of preconditions, and I'm sure you will be able to discuss this, is removing barriers for entrepreneurship and uh, well, improving connectivity, I don't think we have to discuss that much. That was a subject of the previous session, but it's an obvious precondition for economic diversification and innovation. So thank you, and thank the you. word is no to the panel. Thank you very much.